Hi everyone, this is Jackie, and today we're talking about how to talk about art. We're starting with a cartoon by Benoit Van Innes that was published in the New Yorker magazine. It looks like there's a party or some sort of gathering happening, and there are several large works of abstract art positioned around the room. The caption at the bottom reads, that evening they decided not to discuss contemporary art. This hints at the difficulty many people have understanding and discussing artworks, especially ones with meanings that are less apparent to outsider. However, critiquing artwork is a pathway to understanding it. When you hear the word critical, what are the first thoughts that come to mind? You might not have very positive associations with the word, but if we look deeper at its meaning, perhaps you will see the value of criticism. We give critical feedback to promote improvement. What seems negative is actually part of the process of refinement and progress. Of course, there are good and bad ways to go about offering critical feedback to each other, and we will look into these differences in a bit. The first objective of having the critique is to practice using the vocabulary terms. You've heard me talk about what value is, but can you analyze how your peers are using light or dark tones within their works? Your ability to do so shows me that you understand the definition of the vocabulary terms we've been learning, and more importantly, you can apply the terms meaningfully. The second important function of the group critique is to give each other feedback. As I've already mentioned, aim to be objective and fair when you assess the work of your peers or other artists. Leave your personal opinions about everything else out of the conversations, unless it feels relevant somehow. Aside from bringing irrelevant ideas or unrelated feelings into the conversation, what else should you avoid during the critique? During a bad critique, the comments are superficial and vague. Saying you like something does little to help another person understand what is successful or not about the work that is being analyzed. I'll give you an example. Let's say you are an aspiring pastry chef. You spend weeks developing a recipe for a cake for me. I eat it. You ask for my thoughts and I tell you it was good. You'd probably have a lot of questions remaining. What was good? Was the flavor good? Was it the presentation? Was the bake good? Simply put, you'd need to know more information. We give each other specific and relevant feedback to identify areas in need of development and name the things that are already strong. To help you begin the process of analyzing work more thoughtfully, I've compiled a list of questions which have been broken into the following larger categories. Craftsmanship, creativity, interpretation, and judgment. I want to also add that if the work in question was made for a class assignment that had specific parameters, the artist's ability to satisfy those requirements can also be a good starting point for discussion. Craftsmanship means how well something has been made. You know and I know when you see a drawing or a painting that looks like it took a long time to make. We both can quickly pinpoint works that were rushed or feel incomplete too. Care is evident in the execution of the work. But keep in mind, good craftsmanship is not always synonymous with good art. Sometimes an artist might intentionally use poor craftsmanship because this level of investment matches the concept of the work. Google Marcel Duchamp and the idea of the ready-made if you're not familiar with these works, which often involved little to no effort from Duchamp. In a similar fashion, you intuitively know when an artwork feels creative. It's sometimes hard to articulate what makes a work creative because innovation can come in so many forms. Perhaps your peer had an interesting way of approaching the prompt for the class assignment. Maybe the artist has used materials in a clever way. Spend some time thinking about the work you're viewing and where it leads your thoughts. What is your gut response? Interpretation. How would you describe the work you are seeing? Is it funny? Is it serious? Does it remind you of a weird dream you had last night? 
Does it recall other artworks we've seen as a class or that you've enjoyed on your own? Explain the work as best you can. Whether or not you like a particular artwork is where judgment comes into play. But as we've seen, this is one of several ways to talk about artwork. You might not like a work for one reason, but you can still appreciate the technical merit of the piece. Or maybe the opposite is true. You love the idea of the work and think it shows improvement from other works you've seen by the same person, but the drawing or sculpture appeal appears poorly crafted. Remember, if you state an opinion, if you say you like something, you need to provide the reasons why. We're going to end this presentation the same way it started, with a cartoon. This one was made by the American artist Ad Reinhardt, and it's called How to Look at Looking. A staunch proponent of abstract art, Reinhardt developed a whole series of cartoons devoted to unpacking the mystery of non-objective art. Looking at art and talking about art go hand in hand, and with practice, you will become better at both. That's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching.